Oh, I, I'm I'm uh, really thrilled about this, Anthony. I think that uh, you, you know we, ECAO and uh, our labor partners have offered the government since day one to help. What can we do to help? Uh, you know, let, let us get out there and build those temporary hospitals, the field hospitals. If you need uh, injection sites built, let us get out there and build them. Uh, you know, if it's a matter of helping other sectors understand how to put together uh, uh, site specific or facility specific health and safety plans to deal with COVID, please, we're here to help. Uh, I, I found the most uptake on that through my dealings with the Ontario Chamber of Commerce in the spring and early summer, where a lot of different industries reached out. And so our health and safety person, uh, uh, Tom McKay, did help with some other industries. So when, uh, when the Ontario Chamber of Commerce announced that they had this vaccination support council, uh, I was very eager to, to jump in because we do want to help get through this. We want to help the entire province. Uh, so when they, when they began it, I guess it was a week, just over a week ago, I believe there were roughly or just over 100 businesses, unions and associations that were, were on the call. And so they're, they're, they were talking, they were giving us sort of the lay of the land. And then, you know, wh what is it that we need to do? And there was a lot of ideas back and forth for the Ontario government to match its goal. And that was beginning a week and a half ago. They would have to get 100,000 needles in arms a day, which is a rather staggering number. So how can we, as businesses, associations and unions help? Can we do it on job sites? Uh, one of the more interesting ones for me was up at Bruce Power, Chapman's Ice Cream said, wait a second, you're worried about keeping that at a cold temperature, we can do that for you. And so there's all these interesting offers uh, from, from different, uh, different businesses and, and associations and unions, including logistics, which, which you know, when you're, when you're talking about 100,000 needles in arms a day, logistics is a pretty important thing. So that, that's, uh, I, I'm looking forward, moving forward to, to these working groups coming up with real ideas. I have a meeting with our local uh, contractor associations later on this morning, and I'll be asking them absolutely up front, like, what, what is it that we can do? What is it that you can do to help? Uh, do you have any ideas? And I think it really is this, this, this notion, Anthony, that there's a lot of really good ideas out there. We just need to filter them and get them to the right places. And I think the Ontario Chamber of Commerce does an excellent job at that. And so again, there was, there was absolutely no hesitation in, uh, in joining that group. Uh, I, I'm really optimistic about what they can do to help get needles in arms, educate the public, uh, dispel any myths, those types of things. Uh, you know, look at best practices and, and let's hope we can use some of those. And I, and, I, and I think the other thing that the Ontario Chamber of Commerce would like to do is small to medium businesses need a playbook, right? They don't know what it is they have to do exactly. And, and, and for those smaller and medium businesses, whether it's an electrical contractor or it's a retail outlet, the resources to go out and be able to do that on your own, that can be extremely taxing. So if the Ontario Chamber of Commerce can, for business in general in the province, create a playbook, and ECAO can create a playbook for its members, then I think we're really helping in a significant way.